I, I wrote in that post that you read that I was standing at Starbucks in 2015 uh, in line and I heard a voice behind me and a man said to me, I would like you to disciple me and my friends. And I thought, well, that's not what you hear in Starbucks. You know, that's not a real evangelical place if you know anything about the world. And I thought, what's going on? I looked to him, and I'd never seen him before. He says, I know who you are. He said, I sit way in the balcony. You've never seen me. But he said, there are a group of eight of us who are at the top of our game. He was about 30-something. He said, we live in pottery barn houses. All of us own our own businesses. We're CEOs or CFOs or partners. And he said, we totally have made it financially. But he said, we all sat around and decided we needed to start getting serious about God. How do you like that? So he stalked me into Starbucks and said, we will meet at 6 a.m. once a week if you will come and teach the Bible to us. And he said, starting next week. <laughs> he didn't ask. He told me. And, and so I went. And, and so that was in 2015. And the next two years were what I would say the greatest years I ever had. Eight men who, with all their heart, had decided that they were going to obey the Lord and follow him. And each one of them were believers, but that was it. You know, they were just successful businessmen, believers, but they had never really studied the Bible. They'd never read the Bible all the way through. They never had taught the Bible. And so I began with them every week at 6 a.m. for two solid years. And what I told them is, if you'll stick with me, we're going to cover the entire Bible. We're going to cover every department of systematic theology. We're going to cover all the attributes of God. And we're going to cover the application of the Bible, so much so that you're going to, at the end of every week, have a prayer written down that asks the Lord to change your life in the way you studied from the Bible that week. And I said, and you're going to share that with your wife. Oh, that was the killer. They said, we don't do stuff like that. I said, well, to stay in the weekly Bible study, next week you're going to tell me what the Lord taught you and what you shared with your wife. It totally changed their lives. Those, those eight are still beloved friends, and most of them are supporting us as missionaries to this day. So this is um, the 52 greatest chapters of the Bible. What we're going to cover right here in the red box, week 29 of the study was John 1. We're going to do that tonight, Lord willing. The eternal word, Jesus Christ, reveals God the Father. Tomorrow morning, uh, John 3, the miracle of being born again. The way Jesus, and with them, I presented, I showed them every time Jesus shared the gospel in the gospels, you know, the four gospels, each time Jesus shared the gospel, you know what's unique? He doesn't ever do it the same way twice. Amazing. And you'll see about tomorrow. John 10, the next day, the joy of following the good shepherd. One of the clearest indicators of salvation is Jesus said, my sheep, what? Hear my voice and they know me, and they follow me. That means we hear his voice as we read his word every day, and we're going to look at that. Uh, then the greatest event of all, the crucifixion and resurrection the next day, then the prophesied birth of the church. Did you know there's a prophecy in the Old Testament about the church and about communion and about the crucifixion of Christ in Psalm 22? And all of that is fulfilled and a whole lot more in Acts 2. And then we're going to look at the decline and fall of the human race that we're quite aware of if you look at the news every day. So those are the ones we're going to cover. Uh, this is the whole course, the 52 greatest chapters. How do you like that microscopic chart there? Uh, and this is the how-to. And that's our, we actually have a nice Facebook page devoted to this. And I get notes, uh, even today, I got a note from a group in Australia that said, uh, we're going through and we love it and we're thankful and we're growing and we are having trouble sharing it with our wives and all that stuff, just like the Americans have trouble. Uh, this is what, what we do with the groups. And by the way, I started teaching this at the Bible Institute. Uh, I use pieces of all these different 52 chapters, uh, but I make all the students for their project every week when, when uh, they have to turn it in to get credit. They have to do the titles. Did you know every Word of Life uh, Bible Institute student has to title every chapter, all 1,189 of the Bible? How many of you knew that? Okay. 
I tell them that's the starting point of your project. You're already started. I said, but for the book we're covering this week, you also have to write down as many lessons, truths, doctrines as you can find in your own words. And if you want to invest the time, look up in a good study Bible, either online or a paper one, and then look at this. Write a prayer in which you ask the Lord to unleash one of those truths or lessons into your life. Did you know that was the kicker for the men? For them to read their prayer out loud to the group, First you have to say that there's something you need in your life from the Lord. Then you have to actually ask him for it. And then you have to share that in front of... Did you know men don't really like to share anything personal or showing a weakness? Uh, And you know, some of those chapters of the Bible have some lessons in them that are very transformational. So, uh, But we surveyed the whole Bible using the 52 greatest. What do I mean by that? Well, there are 52 chapters that... They're kind of like the, the infrastructure or the frame, the foundation and frame of the whole Bible. And if you had a tornado from Oklahoma blowing away, you know, all the siding and the roofing, the part that stays, you know, that really solid part, the framework, that's what these 52 chapters are. And so, by the way, that's my wonderful wife that's en route. Uh, but... To introduce me, because I don't know all of you, Uh, my name is John Barnett. That's Colorado behind us, where we live for one and a half months a year. We have a home there. We travel the rest. I was saved at age six, called to the ministry at age nine. Uh, When when I was uh, 19 years old and got to Bible college, I'd read the Bible only once because I got paid $100. Someone said, if you read the whole Bible, we'll pay your way to camp. 100 bucks. I read the whole Bible. By the way, it only takes 72 hours for a 6th grader to read the Bible out loud. How do you like that? Out loud. 72 hours. And so I've read the Bible 7,200 hours, 700 times. I went to Michigan State University, Bob Jones University, uh, the Master Seminary, Dallas Seminary, and got bachelors and bachelors and masters and masters and masters and doctorate. Uh, pastored for 40 years, been married for over 35 years. That's my only regret. I just wish I'd have met Bonnie sooner, honestly. Uh, We raised eight children. Uh, Bonnie and I together have uh, traveled and taught God's Word in over 70 countries of the world. What I believe, and you should always know what someone believes before you uh, listen to them very much, Uh, But what I believe is uh, I'm an evangelist. In other words, I don't think anybody got saved because they were born in the right country or family. They have to be saved. Uh, And I share the gospel regularly. I have a gospel track in my pocket ready for whoever my appointment from the Lord is uh, next. I'm an imputationist. That's that Christ alone saves. And it's only if you believe that he died and became sin for us. That's the only way sin can be erased. You know that, 2 Corinthians 5.21. I'm a creationist. God made everything, and he told us that in Exodus chapter 20 on Mount Sinai in the Ten Commandments that he made everything in six solar days. There's no room for all this theistic evolutionary thought in God's description. He said, for as the Lord your God made heaven and earth in six days and rest of the seventh, so you slaves in Egypt... You know, the the Hebrews should work six days and rest the seventh. There's no way they understood that to be anything but a literal solar week. So I'm a creationist because God is. I'm a catastrophist. That means that Noah's flood really happened and did all that we see. I'm a cessationist. That means that the revelation of Scripture has ended. Uh, And there are no prophets that speak on the level of inspired scripture, even though we have a whole confused part of Christendom in that area. I'm a maximalist. That's that God's historic and scientific facts are true. There are many believers that think that all the positive and and kind of theological parts, but whenever you get into science or history, we're not sure that the Bible is true. And that's the minimalist view. And uh, if you really believe in inspiration, God's historic and scientific facts are all true. And I'm a dispensationalist, which means Israel's not the church, and that's why they were singing here, because it sure sounds like the Lord of the church is coming soon.